what is good we got the ogs back in the house if you're not subscribed on youtube go ahead and do so uh that way you could got the last video we just did we did a little contender pretender did talk a little if you're ready to push for the ship if you were not uh talked about how you would uh maybe rebuild it a little bit here and here we have some just straight up teams that are in the process of rebuilding uh or kind of what their next move should be so we're going to talk a little bit more just rebuild forward we won't have to decide if it's a right this contender, is not, pretender not contender pretender these so, guys said hey i'm rebuilding yeah so um we got some patreon submissions here um and we have a we have a team here who is you know he's already in the process of his rebuild it's fully underway yeah um, fully and, fully committed fully committed and so we you know we can kind of highlight um if you think this is an appropriate way to go about this and i i think it's a it's a pretty solid team as far as a rebuild goes i mean this is kind of what you want to see you got youth and high-end prospects at the top of uh each category essentially sure outside of the tight end which you still have a really good player he's just not super young which the tight end position is, is hard to get both uh, right sometimes. I mean, so, mark andrews good <clears throat> good enough and young enough so he's got richardson stroud levis garoppolo and this is uh super flex we're we're assuming super flex right. here i followed up he didn't give me the answer so we're assuming super flex here we're assuming super flex because stroud and levis on the same team right? right so you got two rookie quarterbacks you got anthony three rookie you got anthony richardson stroud and levis out of the same draft class so i, I assume super flex right Maybe you were just out of picks, and those, <laughs> maybe those are, the, those are your maybe, best picks yeah, left there. Yeah, but yeah. we'll assume super flex in this uh, situation here. Okay, um, he's got Brees Hall, Tony Pollard, and, and Carter. Mm -hmm. Which you know, again, if we're if we're rebuilding here, what we don't want is a bunch of running backs on the team. They're just a liability. You're going to try to sell as much off as you can, um, and then when you're ready to come back, like a Brees, you don't need to sell Brees. Sure. You can you can hang out with Brees, um, and then he, but he does have Carter on there, and those are basically his only two running backs. Uh, rostered currently with Pollard with Tony Pollard um, so now that, that one's a little maybe he just hasn't been able to get the right package or maybe he got him in a package right in one of his higher end trades there's nothing wrong with having three or four more running backs I understand what you're saying and what you're saying is absolutely correct you don't want the, the huge starters putting up big points no no no, no absolutely not there but you could have three more backups sure and as soon as their person gets hurt and they start doing something you trade them away you don't want to have, let's say, Tank Bixby on your team. And then I mean, you want him on your team, especially in a rebuild. You want Tank Bixby. ETN goes down. Bixby starts doing work, right? You don't use him at the moment to make your drafts. You don't want, you don't want to go from, you know, 1112 to 1 5 because right. you had Tank Bixby. So you take Tank Bigsby at that time and maybe get a first round pick for him or, you know, maybe you take your, you know, your second. Maybe you got Tank Bigsby in a two and you go after a team who's bad. and Go you're after like, hey. ETN's owner who maybe right. they were Some, in contention. Exactly. Best case scenario. Some, exactly. Something like that. So just say it's not like you don't want any running backs. You just don't want ones putting that are putting quality points in your lineup unnecessarily. Right. Because you're not trying to win right now. And this right. is like you said, this team right here, when you get done going through everything, they're already in the middle of a rebuild. So he's already deployed rebuild strategy. So that's why he's got three running backs and probably has something to do with all these draft picks that he has because he probably sold running backs to get those draft picks. Correct. The rest of the lineup is JSN. Like I said, there isn't any more running backs on the, three. On the uh, roster. Three here. running backs. Total. He's got JSN, Burks, Jameson Williams, Elijah Moore, Tyler Lockett, Mims, DPJ, Lazard, Terrace Marshall, Josh Palmer, and Kyle Phillips as his wide receivers and then mark andrews isaiah likely woods jelani Jawan johnson. Jawan johnson kate otten and gerald everett so um some good he time. also doesn't say if this is premium or not but uh everett has been one of my favorite if, if you miss on redraft tight ends or at the end of your 20th round or whatever everett should be automatically picked up and any format really tight end premium especially herb smith too <laughs> you're thing. getting yep. you're getting kellen moore Going over to, uh, San, yeah, not San Diego. We're going over to L.A. Chargers. I mean, look at what Dalton Schultz has done in that offense. Yeah, and and now you just you're surrounded with a Herbert is for sure a better quarterback than Dak Prescott. The 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 situation seems way better than what the Cowboys have had over there throughout that whole time. And I would assume that Gerald Everett is a 
scotch more athletic than, uh, <laughs> yes. you know, Schultz. A little older, um, but I think still only 28. I think scotch is still in uh, short. Yeah, but just a good tight end. So anyway, uh, Kate Otten, you know, another one, another nice late round shot who, you know, as a rookie made Cameron Brait, you know, not not super relevant. Jelani Woods, nice shot. We love Likely. Been on, if you've been fucking with us, like Likely's been, been Likely's my, on been your my team. guy. Likely's on your taxi squad if you've been listening to Casey. Um, and, you know, I think you might like Likely more than I like Likely. I right do now. now. <laughs> I had no idea. I had no idea who Likely was until you told me about him. But, all you know, he's just, he's too fluid. He's too fast. He's too good to not be. And I love the Mark Andrews Likely stack. Love that. The Andrews goes down, likely crushes. Um, there's just no doubt about it. The, when that Andrews missed time last year, look at the game log. You can tell which games li- Andrews wasn't in there. Likely killed it. It right. was only like two or three games, but he crushed it. Yeah. So, I mean, and then you're saying, all right, well, w- this roster is like it is. So what, 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 what happened here? Well, he's got four firsts and he's got four seconds. And yeah. We're not even, we hadn't started the season yet. Right. Um, he's killing it. And then, you know couple fourths and then next year uh the following year he already has two seconds still has a first and a fourth so you know he's already loading up for 25 a little bit so he he's just this is pretty much the position that you 100 percent want to be in uh in the situation and i don't know if like i said if if a guy like andrews and pollard maybe came over in another deal yeah that he was getting done uh, it, th- those are kind of odd guys to have on the team here. Obviously, Tyler Lockett is also somebody that you probably want to move if possible. And then, you know, but you want you got four firsts and four and four seconds move going into 24 and then already two twos in 25. You're so fluid with however you want to do. You, you're, you're able to if deals come up, you're able to facilitate them. Those don't have to be there next year. Right. Like you said, and we talked about it in the last podcast. You know, you get rookie fever and we had a plan. We get we had a team where we had three first round picks coming into the draft and ended up with pretty much only drafting one player out of those three. Uh, and that, the, at, at, we were in the top, you know, eight picks of the draft. We had three picks and two of them were top three. Um, and we didn't draft it. We, and we, 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 get, we got Bijan because, oh, my bad. I was because Richardson team. got traded up. Thought you were talking about coach. No, no. This this was, uh, you know, we ended up getting Bijan, so we had to take him because yeah. the person who traded up to one took Richardson. Yeah. So we had to take Bijan, uh, and then we ended up not taking any of those other guys. We we got veterans and then moved back and then took a you know a a, a Laporta in the one thirteen spot because it was that's kind of how it works. So anyway, you don't have to make those picks. You know, we were coming in thinking we we're going to get you know Gibbs or Stroud and 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 and. Uh, JSN or Gibbs and or Bryson Stroud or you know we were thinking we were coming in doing one thing and just you know so it's not you don't want to go in too hot and heavy you want to have a good idea uh, but you know you're so fluid now throughout the whole year and you know obviously you want some of those first to go in because rookie fever you know rookie fever is real is a real thing so like you said you when you look at this team and you're like well how this happened so on the la- on the last show that we did the team that we had all those running backs and they were had been um injured and he was a perennial mid and it was like well what are you doing with this or that or you know the barclays and stuff like that so this team right here has jsn burks jameson williams and marvin mims awesome rookies or you know second year players Moore, who's only a third year player is could sure. be ready to explode but like potentially. The jameson williams last year he could have traded uh you know a say saquon barkley for jameson williams in one of those first right you know I, i've a while you know months ago i came in here and did the uh, rebuild um draft a uh, rebuild team that i had and i had i walked through each every one of those trades that i did and i came up with five first round picks or four first round picks in an early two or something like that i might have had five first um so that's how that happens you t- when you tear it down to the bare bones like we were talking about on the past show that we did when you trade away the Barclays or the, you know, whoever the ETNs or the Kelsey's, you know, you get a young player like a Burks or a Jameson Williams or a this or a that, you know, and then you get a pick as well. And now you just, you're adding stuff, you know, and, in, in the show that I did last year going into the season when I traded Barkley for, um, George Pickens in a first, you know, that was before the season ever started. So it's like, well, you know, and that, and that first, you know, happened to turn into the one, one, I got lucky. There was another couple of trades I did where I didn't get lucky. Picks were late, you know, so you never know how it's going to work out. But 
it's 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 fun when you look at this team this team is fun i've you know i'm yeah i haven't been here and recorded a whole lot with you guys lately but i've you know jay wayne's been joking about putting the fun back in fantasy and it's just like when you re obviously the goal is to win and win. you know you're whether you play in a high money league or what you want to win you the bragging rights matter hopefully the pot is decent size you make some money you know it's fun but if if you're not winning then you you have there's so much fun to be had in a rebuild and i I spent my first 10 years playing dynasty, either winning or being really close to winning. So I was a little spoiled. I didn't have to rebuild. Mm -hmm. Well, then all of a sudden, you know, all my wide receiver, you know, my AJ greens and my Julio's and my T Y Hilton's and all those guys get old. And it's like, I'm rebuilding all, you know, I'm rebuilding out of necessity and start to understand all that. It's like, all right, well that is kind of fun. And when you do something to this extent, it, it gets really fun. And then you start to be proud of like, all right, well, can I turn this team around? where are we headed you know so embrace a rebuild if you're going to do it you either you're either a, a championship team or you're not i'm not saying that you have to be completely studded out or you need to be tearing it down to the bones but just look yourself in the mirror like we said you, you know can i win if you get to the playoffs anything can happen but if you probably are not going to make the playoffs then you know don't ride travis kelsey and don't let travis kelsey die on your roster mm -hmm. that's that's stupid that's yeah. not playing dynasty football it's like even if he if even if he won you two championships out of the last four and then you know something else a couple guys did this couple that you know like hey well you know what kelsey's my boy i got two titles and i got some trophies and i'm just he's just not gonna be on anybody else's team that's dumb yeah give you know hey if your team is still good that's not dumb he right. down your roster while you're winning championships that's fine i got a team i refer i might have christian mccaffrey die on one of my teams because i'm still winning and if i keep winning i don't know if i can trade him but that's the smart thing <laughs> right. to do the smart thing to do is to trade them you know you father time is undefeated so anyway so this team right here four first round picks four second round picks like you said fluid so what do you um, what do you do with andrews like are you you trying to see which how you can turn that into pits you get more than more than pits uh for what's about or, to happen or like Andrews. is there or you're that, trying to turn it into Kincaid and plus or you like you, how do, what do you do there you you watch the fantasy points stack up and the people in the in your league drool over him that's mm -hmm. what you do i saw i saw a tweet today um the and dude, you have the package so you're fucking and yeah. you got the likely yeah. <laughs> yeah so i saw a tweet today and it said travis kelsey in the last two years has um outproduced mark andrews by 1300 and something receiving yards maybe mm -hmm. which is outstanding um it's ridiculous um and i may not i may not mean exact quote but it's pretty much what they were saying and it said but based on yards per route run if andrews would have just been running the same amount of routes as kelsey ran kelsey andrews would have beat him by 47 yards so uh so you know right to some extent something like that something very close to what i just said mm -hmm. Which means that the Ravens' offense, archaic, run it, pound it, run it again, throw it sometimes, versus what the Chiefs are deploying every set that they get, you know, pre snap motion all over the place. And they're, you know, Kelsey's getting all these targets. It basically said, who's the new offensive coordinator for the Ravens? The Monken? Todd Monken. Monken. So it basically said, Watch what Munkin does for Andrews. Mm -hmm. The pass volume going up. Watch what it does for Andrews. I saw that today, and I've got a ton of Andrews. Competition volume's up a bit, but yeah, I agree. Well, sure. But, I mean, it can't hurt. I mean, yeah, yeah. the competition's up a bit, but but for the last three seasons, the wide the defense is like, what? <laughs> yeah. the running game and Andrews. Yeah. Who, what, what wide receiver have they even had to watch? Yeah. Andrews is running around out there in bracket coverage all day long, and he's still, you know, so anyway, on this team – I'm holding Andrews unless you're trading him to somebody like me who understands his real value. But you are trying. You're going to try to trade him. You have but, to. Not necessarily. He's no, he's 28. He's 28. You <laughs> don't he's have to. 29. But. He's 27. You got Anthony Richardson. <laughs> Why is he getting younger? Because you keep. He's definitely. He's a long way from 30. You back that up. You you retract. You retrace your statement. He turns twenty eight. Um, exactly. September he's twenty seven. He's basically as of recording. He's twenty eight. He's twenty seven tonight. Twenty eight season starting. He, you could listen to this in a week. He'll still be twenty seven. <laughs> you got Anthony Richardson and Stroud. Stroud's the you know most fun quarterback ever right now. Everybody loving Stroud's ball placement. Drink. Stroud's um, Stroud's a trade down to to Daniel Jones and get something plus for me. 
Agreed. Completely agree. That's what I'm saying. But like, so why trade Andrews? You got Brees Hall. You got four first. You got JSN Burks, and what? You're you're this team right here is going to win next year. Yeah, I oh, certainly can. That so I'm not Played trading properly, Andrews on yeah. this team. I'm okay. not. He's too young. If he's 26 and a half, you know. <laughs> so I'm not. I'm not trading Andrews on this team. I've got this. I got the likely stack. I'm insulated. I got JSN. I got Burks. I got Jamison Williams. I got Elijah Moore coming back out of the grave. I got fucking Gilbert Grape over here is getting fucking. You know, <laughs> aging backwards. You know, I so I, I this team right here is just. I'm not doing much. I'm just watching. I'm I'm I might I'm taking advantage. I'm probably going to I'm looking to upgrade off Stroud and I I like what you trading down to Daniel Jones and getting something from Stroud is Benjamin Button was the movie I was looking for not is Gilbert Grape. The way you play Dynasty because yeah. Daniel Jones with the thing about Daniel Jones is now he's paid and the thing about Brian Dayball is he's the head coach. So what happened with Dayball and um the Bills, he was the offensive coordinator, and all of a sudden Josh Allen's a stud, but everybody's looking at the defensive-minded head coach and just talking about how smart he is. You know, Dayball got his got some flowers here and there, but it was um, – what's his name that was used to be with the Panthers defensive coordinator? McDermott. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sean McDermott's a, a mastermind. How'd the Panthers let him go? You know what they're saying now? How'd the Bills let Brian Dayball go? Yeah. go? So now Dayball's the head coach. He's not going anywhere. The Giants are so happy to have him. For some reason, they paid all that money to Daniel Jones. He's not as good to, as that money would represent, but he's good enough. And he's got Dayball. Mm-hmm. And now he's got some weapons. And now, I, so, I mean, I, I, Stroud could be amazing, but he doesn't have that. And, he, and, he, and it may end up being there. I know me and you got in a nice little argument the last time I was here about the Texans and their state mm-hmm. of existence, mm-hmm. you know. I, I would love to see that upgrade. But what's going on in it, you know, sure, week one, week two, week three, maybe the Texans are like, hey, man, look at us. We're not the bottom of the NFL anymore. But the Giants are on the come up, and they got day ball. So I love going – I love what can you I, – I don't know how much you're getting – I don't know how much that actually in real life when somebody makes that trade, how much they're giving you to go from Jones to Stroud. Because I don't, depending on whose team it is, I don't know if you see that as a big upgrade. Oh, there's so many fucking Daniel Jones haters out there still. Like there's a stupid. But he's, but if he's on that guy's team, he might not be a Daniel Jones hater is what I'm saying. It's not a, it's not, it's not a start. Well, hey, and I mean that, well, no, I think he could still be a hater. I think he could begrudgingly score all those points and think it's not happening again. Okay. And and base, I think I think there's plenty of Daniel Jones hate out there still. So I've, I've, I I think that, I think there's plenty of gap in there to to get get you a nice little plus. I say take Stroud and go get Daniel Jones plus, or take Stroud and Levis to you know put them together and I mean take shit, a draft I, pick and I, I'm not a I'll go I'll go down to. I'll go down to golf. I'll go down to Jer. I'll go down to Geno Smith. I don't care. Like I can just get even more. Even more. What does even more mean? Yeah, exactly. You I know, get the thing about picks it is and, uh, and more plus and 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 uh, and another running back or another good receiver or whatever. And and you know, Geno Smith was QB five last year, QB eight last well, year. Yeah, you points know, per game, things, not as much. Things but things he, got even better for him. He, like things he, got a lot better. He had for him. two starting rookie tackles. Plus, in the pre, I'm big on what happened in the in the in the off season, in the preseason and training JSN camp and everything. Added else. now, just it was weapons. That the the dude that was supposed to be the real starter for the Seahawks went. Go down to Kenny Pickett. Fuck it. Let's go. Kenny Pickett's going to be this year's Daniel Jones. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. I don't know. Canada and Dave Ball, they're not the same, but they're not the same. It don't um, matter. I mean. Oh, it matters. Um, no, because Pickett's got the legs. That's what helped, That's what Daniel Jones is. It, the, the scheme for, for – and then the situation around Pickett is far better than what is going on. Not the scheme, not but the, the scheme. situation the, is the, far the, better. The players, the beside What him. is going on around – Completely agree. Uh, Pickett's way better and the athleticism is he's like a 4740 guy like he's the athleticism is good and just listening to him talk and saying how you know he needs to be able to utilize the mismatch and know when it, he needs to take off a little more so I think I think he's going to be guy with seven eight hundred rushing yards this year and, and be that's a lot of rushing yards I, that's I, what I, Daniel Jones had last year I know but I'm saying to that's go, what I'm saying yeah well yeah all right let's go pick it yeah I think I think Gino might have had three 380 last year? Gino was running around for 30 yards a game. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, well, 
not 30 no, yards it's not game, sexy but, but you know i think i think the move down off the rookie quarterback because like you said i don't know if i don't know if i'm going to i don't know if i'm taking stroud to gino on this team i don't know if i'm ready to go to gino on this team this team right here maybe next year sure if, I mean, if that's, I get that's gino fine. I'm, I'm saying the idea of how can i pivot down <laughs> and pick up a ne- more young good players is basically what I'm trying to do there, and maybe Stroud will be awesome, but but maybe you won't. So agreed. Okay. Oh, don't um, don't get me wrong. I've I've. S- what do you do with Pollard here? You sell him, right? You and can that, sell him now because people love Pollard. You don't, Pollard's not a guy where you need to see him hit the field. You're trying you're trying to get like an like suit going stay in that young vibe. The Jordan Addison, Quentin Johnston, Jerry Judy. Yeah, give me Christian I mean, Watson. Oh sure, he's already got Burks and JMO. Give him, give me, give me, give me Christian Watson all day long. I see if he could sprinkle a little something on top of mm-hmm. Pollard and Watson. Yeah, I, I mean, and I got no problem with Judy. He's still he's been in the league three years now. He's still twenty three. You know, he's so young. Um, I, I think Pollard. Uh, I saw Pollard get traded for a late Pollard and a late a late first like. Not 112 because I'm in the league and I've won three out of four years, but Pollard and 111 or 110 every year for Brees Hall. Mm-hmm. Obviously, this guy has Brees Hall. It's not the same, but you know what? Like Pollard is a Pollard is a valuable. Pollard and one of those first and seconds to see how much it takes to get up to Brees. Absolutely. Or to uh, Bijan. Sure. How how can you get Bijan on this team? Pollard. Uh, probably probably two first to get Bijan because you get in his name. You got to pay for Bijan's name, and I mean, easily. I mean, you know, the guys, the points per game, the Pollard bros would be like, "What Pollard could easily outscore Bijan? Yeah, he could." But Pollard's twenty six, and Bijan's just getting started. Um, mm-hmm. you know, but if you want to have a good time, Brees Hall and Bijan on the same team mm-hmm. is, and with these receivers and those first. You know, I think the biggest help that we're going to give to our our buddy here that sent this in is don't trade Andrews. Um, <laughs> that's that's the biggest advice I, I can could give disagree you. with that. Um, but. No, but I mean, definitely trading Pollard because uh, you're not you're probably you you know anything can happen, especially if depending on, if it's two points premium, Andrews is going to take you to the playoffs by himself. But you're probably not winning this year. You're, that wasn't you're your goal. Not winning this that year. wasn't your goal to begin with. So you need to trade Pollard. You get a ton for Pollard. That's the point. Pollard and Stroud for that Daniel Jones and what combo in the same team. I'll give you Pollard and Stroud. You give me Daniel Jones and X, Y, Z. And if, if you can get lucky and the guy that has Bijan has a little quarterback market in there and you can play that, um, you know, Pollard, Stroud, um, and and your picks that so you get Bijan and, a, you know, you get, get creative because you have the four first and you have the four twos. Um, Pollard that, and Stroud for Kyler? Pollard and Stroud for Kyler. Uh, no, you can get helps better. your team. Not not uh, you get better. Than may, that. Maybe yeah, I'm sure you probably could. I I told you uh, th- uh, Kyler's a pickup for this team for me the, somehow some way. The ADP for Kyler I said was not real, and I'm in a startup right now, and he went in the third round. Yeah, late third round. He's two eight and in our ADP. He should be. Yeah. Uh, why? Because there's not a bunch of bobos and idiots drafting our. He went late our third. Leagues. He went late third there's in this startup. Absolutely no in. reason that he needs to be so just, stupid. You so know. stupid. And it's like, well, well, Vico, why didn't you trade up and get him? I wasn't the game I was playing, but at the same time, I should have traded up and got him. Um. Yeah. But yeah, it's so, uh. But yeah, you're you're right. And I was when you say trade up and got him, I was nowhere before the draft started. I had. I had one twelve, so I had one twelve two one, and I had three twelve four one, and I traded three twelve and four one before the draft started because I didn't want anybody in that range, not knowing that Kyler would make it like three eight. That was preposterous. I could have traded up from three twelve to get to Kyler at three eight. I just wasn't. I was two rounds down the board because mm-hmm. I didn't want to be in that range. Anyway, what were you saying? Nothing. I just the the idea of of. Trading in for Kyler and on this team probably good because he's going to miss some time and then. It, you know. Oh, for sure. And interest, you know, this team right here. I'm sure Jay Wayne's got a graphic up for you guys on YouTube. Pollard is the fun part of this team because you know you've already made your trades. You've got all these first round picks and you got all these young stud, hopefully stud wide receivers, and you got you know Richardson. You got these three rookie quarterbacks, Richardson leading the pack. Um, so. At some point in your rebuild process, you 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 only got so much more tinkering you can do. Mm-hmm. Of course, you got the stud Andrews, but 
you know, you got Pollard left. You, you Whatever trades you did to come up with these first-round picks, you know, like I was saying in the team I rebuilt, I traded away um, – Barkley and I traded away Kittle you know those were individual you know I got I got Kittle I think maybe just a straight up first round pick but Barkley got me pickings in a first and I I packaged up four players and got a first round pick and I traded away Josh Allen which ended up being a terrible trade for me uh you know but I traded away some players and you know started the rebuild but after a while you only you don't have any more players to trade away you just got to ride it out for a minute and get to the right off season to those first round picks now you got a whole nother game to play exactly now you start it over now you start in the off season with those first round picks and because you can't you can trade those first round picks anytime you want but the biggest thing is is you i mean they just keep getting more valuable you know yeah. so yes can you go you can take a pollard in a first round pick and a stroud and or you know or levis and go get a Bijan all day long you got to do that you got to try you got to you got to play that game you know but and then you know and maybe throw elijah moore in there or maybe you know throw Jawan johnson in there or gerald everett in maybe there tyler you know, lockett in there Tyler Lockett in there. you got to pack you got to throw all of them in there to get Bijan. But at the same time, but if you're not getting, if you're not buying like a top end, if you're not getting a JS, if you're not getting a, a Waddle, if you're not getting a St. Brown or not something, JSN already. you know, yeah. if, well, you know, but if you're not getting one of those fun, fun young players for those first now, why not wait it out? Because once yeah, the, I agree. When, the, when the first round, when the, when the, when the draft comes back around, you've got a third of it. Mm-hmm. You literally have four out of 12. You're in so much control. You control the draft and you got the, same you got it four seconds so you Which, own the draft you know is a bummer for the rest of the league because now the league is very much pigeonholed into you know the moveability of the league has been you're, you're now you're controlling everything so that you know it's just a whole nother aspect of like once you get in it's such a pain in the you're such a pain in the ass for everybody in the league because you're pigeonholed into the, the flexibility and movability that you try to have in the in the rookie draft as far as the person who doesn't have all the picks or if it's a regular where maybe a guy has a pick or you know maybe one or two people have an extra pick or two just the yeah not free to move about the cabin this this guy is controlling the draft yeah so so what you're saying is if i got pick five and this guy right here has pick six and seven or and and nine i don't get to trade back as easily the trade back is, yeah. is so difficult i don't get to move around because one guy has three out of the next five picks right. or something he's con- he's in control is it guy why would i want to trade back with you know I'm, yeah i got three this? picks right. coming up yeah yeah so um you know this is a this is a good spot to be in this is a this this what you're looking at on the screen is why and this is why rebuilding is fun winning is more fun <laughs> But the but being in the middle of the league, finishing at one seven every year sucks. Yeah, it's terrible. So that's you know you gotta you gotta again look yourself in the mirror, and uh, and do some pivoting. Love it. Um, all right, so let's get off of that team. 